Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Executive Director of the NAM Foundation and your host, Mary Lurson. show the first thing you're supposed to do is come out and talk to the band so I can't wait to talk to this band aren't they something wow what a great so I'd, I'd like you to meet the band they're from the Manhattan School of, of Music the electronic music jazz ensemble electronic jazz ensemble let's meet the band can you tell us your name Hi, I'm Santos. I'm from Seattle, Washington. on Santos on saxophone uh, Hansu. Uh, play bass I'm from Korea from Korea? I'm Andres, I'm from New York, and I play the drums. Okay. <laughs> Gotta meet the band. Here we go. My name is Sun, I'm from Korea, I play the guitar. Great. <laughs> My name is Sam, I'm from New York as well, I play piano. Okay, miss and who is this lad in the band? Who is this lad in the band? Ooh, my goodness. Um, yeah, Bernie Williams. Bernie Williams. Um, <laughs> I still have my fingers intact, uh, and uh, yeah, I was actually part of uh, this ensemble when I was in school. I, I did this ensemble for I think one or two years, one year, about a year, yes. And uh, yeah, such a humbling experience, uh, you know, we had uh, going, I mean, I actually graduated a year and a half ago from the Manhattan School of Music with a degree in jazz performance. Uh, so you can see how I was getting my rear end handed to me on a daily basis by, by these young, very talented musicians. And uh, at some point I had to say, uh, well, I have two options. Uh, you either quit or you work harder to keep up with them. And I decided to work harder. And uh, it, yeah, it was uh, one of the most humbling experiences that I've ever had and uh, um, but much, uh, much better for it. Yes, and here we are to kick off the Grand Rally with this great band. Thank you. Also in the uh, Manhattan School of Music Electronic Jazz Ensemble are a couple of Innovation Award winners, right? Kind of wave, give a wave here. This is a program of the NAM Foundation where we provide a, a scholarship, a stipend, for this year 94 college music students to come and be part of the NAM show. Um, and they are part of a group of over 2,400 college music students and faculty that are here looking at careers and their life forward in music and music education. So we're so grateful to have you, and we're so congratulate to our Innovation Award winners. And we always must remember that it all starts with the teacher, and their great teacher is Richard Sussman of the Manhattan School of Music. Thank you, Richard. So Richard, when we were working on this show, you, you said in one of your emails, yeah, I worked in TV, I know how to do this, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, that's true. I did spend a fair number of years working in, uh, on, on TV, composing music, and, and doing some performing also. So what's it like working with these talented students? There you Well, I'll tell you, it's humbling for me also, you know, because uh, I, uh, a lot of times I feel I learn more from them than they learn from me. Yeah, you know? right. And uh, th this is a, a especially a very talented and great group. Let's have another hand for the, for the right. MSN Electronic Jazz Ensemble. And also, Mr. Bernie Williams, who keeps getting better every time I hear him. Yeah. And for their great teacher. Thanks, Richard. Right. It's been great to work with you. <clears throat> well, um, this has been, uh, I think, the third or fourth year of our Grand Rally. We didn't really start as a Grand Rally, but maybe this is our third official year as a Grand Rally. And one thing that we do, we are live webcasting at nam.org. And then we are also live Facebooking at Enter Talk Radio. I think there's gonna be some information up there. We'd love you to get the word out and get people to um, know that we're online now. It's a little bit, it's, it's uh, later on the East Coast, so kind of no problem, you know, get up, get going, get that cup of coffee, come and join us. Um, because, you know, it's really important that anyone and everyone that cares about music and music education knows that they are part of this community, whether they're here in Anaheim with us or whether they t are touching us virtually. So please share, all this, uh, share this information with them, get it out, share it on your social media, 
And way back in the dark ages when we only did our coalition gatherings on conference calls, do you remember? <laughs> Before we had any of this technology, we would do live events around the country and we always did one thing. We gave a shout out to everyone that was online and listening. So let's do that support music shout out to everybody that's online. Welcome them to this event. Come on, give them a big shout out. I know they know you're here. Come on. And maybe next year, wherever a music educator, school administrator, college music student, faculty, or, or someone in the music business or st striving to be in the music business can join us at the Grand Rally next year. You know, we come together for a very, very specific reason, to support one another as advocates and champions for music education. You are a very, very, very special group, and we've had a really remarkable week here in Anaheim that started on Tuesday morning at the Ana uh, elementary school in the Al Anaheim School District, where they are now almost at full capacity with music educators throughout the district, and four years ago, they had none. <laughs> tremendous commitment. A tremendous commitment by school board, school administration, principals, teachers, and I think many of the music teachers are here with us now. We went into that school and once again we did guitar classes. Bernie was teaching guitar to the young students there. He went with us. Um, we did ukulele classes. We did mu movement and song classes and we did drum circles and then we all gathered together. So when I come to Anaheim, you know, we, we got a big plan, we got a lot going on, we got a lot of schedules, we got scripts. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. You could, you know, it's like today's like a two Tylenol day already, okay? I mean, there's a lot going on, right? You've all trying to navigate this, this monster called the NAM show. So we start, that's how we start the NAM show. We go into a school and 50 NAM members were there helping us. So, you know, I come to Anaheim and that day of service was kind of the start of something I sort of expect, but I'm always surprised to have, which is a time of reflection. In the midst of all this, there's a little of a reflection that occurs. So we're doing another thing at the NAM show this year. It's called Room Full of Pianos. I don't know how many of you snuck up to the third floor at 5.30. Thursday night, we had 10 just remarkable world-class pianists that came together in a multi-piano ensemble that performed at 5.30. Last night, we had 20 really world-class pianos, pianists that did um, Right of the Valkyrie by Wagner, among other things, <laughs> together in 20. And tonight we have 30, 30, 35, we're not quite sure of the final number, that are doing Gustav Holt's Jupiter from the Planets and the Stars and Stripes Forever in a multi-piano piece. And I've gone to all of these rehearsals, and again, I was hit with a lot of reflection. And hearing these instrumentalists perform, and our kids that are going to perform in a minute, watching them rehearse, it just hit me again, the power of making music and what happens. The collaboration, the willingness to listen to one another, the trust that you just simply have to have waiting for a downbeat or waiting for a chord change or waiting for a tempo to, to accelerate or deaccelerate. It's just really human. So, what we come together to celebrate is our commitment to all of that, but mostly to this musical world that we're all striving to create. And you know, some people have told me, boy, we need it, need it now than, more now than ever. <laughs> and I guess it's really true. So I hope all of you come away from this grand rally and from our time together at the NAMM show remembering that we are the music believers. We are the music makers, and we are the ones that want to carry this forward everywhere in the world to every generation that can learn and grow with music. And thank you for all you do in your part of this work together. Thank you. Another program of the NAM Foundation these last couple of years is we've gone out to our schools and communities across the country and asked them to submit a video to us telling, the, telling us why their music education program is great. 
And about 15, 16, 17 school districts across the country in the last couple of years have won this award. And we've gone to their communities with a community forum and also the John Lennon bus in residence. We went to Country Club Hills, Illinois a, a year ago. And I, wish, I have to say we kind of fell in love. <laughs> we kind of fell in love. There was something about the mayor, there was something about the school board, there was something about the parents, there was something about the teachers, the principals, the, so, the assistant principals, but most of all, there was something about what they were doing for their kids. And they made sure their kids had a remarkable music education program. So they composed a song on, on the John Lennon bus, they made a video, it's up on YouTube, and when it came time to organize the Grand Rally, it was just clear that we had to have these remarkable music students and their teachers and their parents, school leaders with us here today. So please join me in welcoming the, the kids from Country Club Hills, Illinois, and their original composition, Unbreakable.
with me, okay? Get all your, come on, come on. That was great. Get all your friends up here. Fantastic, fantastic. And yes, they were backed up by that Manhattan School, Manhattan School of um, Music Band, so that was great. We have to meet the band. Would you each tell us your name? My name is Courtland Cannon. I'm Jeremiah Hall. My name is Eric Allen. My name is Alexis Franklin. My name is Destiny Williams. My name is Haven Johnson. Aren't they terrific? That's just great. So I want to ask you a couple of questions about the, this. Uh, first of all, they have a video online of this song. How many views does it have? About 2,000. About 2,000 on YouTube. And how many did you all, how many times did you all view it? <laughs> That's, we know how that works. They keep viewing and we're going to view too. Um, the other thing is, it's just a couple of weeks ago, we went back to Country Club Hills with the videographer and we've produced a NAMM Foundation video with these remarkable students, and that just debuted Thursday night. So we want to get as many views as you have now, so we'll, we'll try to push that out there. So who had the idea for this song? How did this start? It was really a group effort. We were just sitting in the band room, and Courtland, she started playing some tunes, and we started to pick up on it. Then Heaven, she joined in on the drums, and then we just started freestyling this thing. We saw what was up. What's up, right? <laughs> and how about the lyrics? How did the lyrics come to be, the theme of the song, Unbreakable? Isn't that a beautiful way to express that? You know, how did that start? Where did that come from? Um, we wanted to have a song that was inspirational, and so we didn't want to, you know, write about the typical things like boys and stuff like that. So we, <laughs> so like, we want something go. that everybody can take part of, everybody could, you know, share with, you right. know, it was a, you know, does that make sense? Oh, it, it makes a lot <laughs> you know, of we sense. We just want right. everybody to feel uplifted. We don't want to tear anybody down or go take a song about a breakup or anything. So, right, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, boyfriends, girlfriends come and go, but what you guys sang about lasts forever. Think about it that way, right? So how long have you all been involved with music? Can we just kind of run down kind of when you started? Well, I started with music ever since I was five years old. Five? I've done music, just different forms of it, as long as I can remember. I started doing music when I was a baby, actually. <laughs> I started singing, and then it turned into playing piano and a bunch of other things that have to do with music. Great. Um, honestly, I can't remember at all, <laughs> but um, if I can put an age on it, I'll say like four-ish. <laughs> great, great. Yeah. I, I don't really remember the exact age, but I know it was like kind of young, so maybe about four. Great, great. About five. About five, you know, and did this happen in school? Did you have a chance in school and at home, yes. right? You've been, you're at home, it started at home. We have to acknowledge the remarkable parents from Country Club Hills. Would you stand and let us thank you? Thank you, parents. Thank you, parents. I'm pretty much speechless in front of you, parents, for, you know, I've been to your school. I went back to your school in December. We helped the school with a drum line, develop a drum line program. Uh, and again, it's just the remarkable support. You are there to make sure your children are going to school, participating in school, the school feels supported. You are a community that really cares about children and it just showed, shown through. So thank you and we're so grateful to have you at the NAMM show. So, so you were in our video, right? You did all did a wonderful job in our video that just debuted and we put it online. But you all said some really wonderful things. But you said one thing about music helps you do things you know you don't want to do. Can you tell us about that? Um, Here, take the mic. Oh, okay. okay. Um, it's just like things that is, is, it's important in your life, but some things that, of course, like as like someone who's like young and doesn't know like the responsibilities and everything that life holds, sometimes you don't want to do it. 
So whenever I listen to music, it just it makes me feel like I know I need to, and I know that I don't might not want to, but I know that I have to. And there's a reward at the end. Yes. Right. Right. And sometimes when you need to do stuff, you can listen to music too, right? So has anyone had big ambitions for music? What did I tell you when I was at, in, at school with you, remember? We had some, what, what, what are you and I going to do someday together? Remember that? Probably don't remember. He sang to me, he sang a, a beautiful song to me when we were there, and then I went, we were hanging out afterwards, I said, someday you and I are going to go to the Grammys. Remember I said that? Yeah, he's working really hard, right? Beautiful voice, working really hard, and we were just... Um, so what are your hopes for yourselves to do in music? Is something you're going to do forever? You had said this, too, that you're always going to do music. Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, music is going to take me, like, I don't know, it took me here. We're in California for doing a video, and I'm... <laughs> I'm really proud of myself and everybody else, and you know, I'm just gonna take it wherever else it leads, and, and bigger things. Right, bigger things. Any, and anyone else wanna add to that? You wanna add to that? Um, when I first received the call that we are going to California to perform this, I was amazed, I was in shock. I didn't know what to think, but then, Something in the back of my mind told me to stick with this and it can keep going and going to bigger and better things. And this is going to be my life career. So I really need to start working on it now and provide further opportunities for myself and I can make this a living. Want to say something? You want to say something too? Okay. Um, I hope music, you know, gets me farther than what I can think. You know, sometimes I feel like our minds can put us in a box, you know, and I don't want to label what I want to do, but I just want to, you know, go wherever God takes me, go wherever music takes me. And I feel like if I uh, don't think about what I can do and what I will do, it will uh, take me farther than my mind can ever, you know, think. So I just hope that music takes me, you know, beyond what I could ever fathom. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, to me, I feel that music can take me very far because ever since I was younger, my family will always put this title over my head, 88 Keys. And so, I, like, in preschool, we were, like, learning the basics of piano, and I actually liked it. So I told my mom that I wanted to do it, and I started getting lessons at five years old. And my piano teacher always would say, I'll go very far. He sees me on a stage playing in front of millions and millions of people. So I'm going to keep that in my head and stick with it. And you got to start here at the NAMM show. Right. Think of it that way. So, and we know that the essence of all of this has been already referred to is, again, the remarkable dedication of teachers. Their two music teachers are here, Chris Smith and Kara Chihan. Please stand, and we thank you for your remarkable, are they here? Or are they backstage? Oh no, they're coming. Come up on on the stage. Here they are. Yay! It's nothing without. It's all about the music teacher. It's all about the music teacher. So we thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think maybe now you know why we just had to have them come here. Isn't this remarkable? And it's, you know, this is what we want every school in our country, really in our world, to be, to have music teachers that care, designated spaces where they can be taught, highly qualified teachers, and an atmosphere where they're just celebrated. So we thank you so much.